think the rev is supposed to be ridden inside. It's also very, very heavy to carry upstairs. Uh, that makes it not so practical for me and, and uh, this office since we do have a bunch of stairs. Anyways, how was your weekend? Uh, I didn't make a video today. Today is Monday. Uh, I didn't make a video on the weekend for today. I just realized that summer's almost over and uh, I don't know, summer's not very long in Canada, so. I just wanted to hang out with the family, relax, take it easy, you know, do normal stuff. This is a big box of stuff. Oh, I should probably be more careful with this. It's the GFX 100. They sent it to me to review. Uh, this camera is worth like over $10,000, so that's why I feel like I should be a little careful with this box, especially since I gotta send it back. I did my uh, initial review of this thing. It's a medium format camera, so the sensor is like giant. Plus it has IBIS, which makes it, I think, one of a kind. I don't really know what else to do with this thing, though. This one's a little out of most of our leagues. Uh, we're probably not gonna be using medium format cameras too much, but I don't know. It's still a very interesting camera. I felt like I should take the opportunity to use it some more. But today we are not talking about 100 megapixel cameras, which this is, and I don't fully know exactly why I need that many me megapixels. But we are gonna talk about something else, and that's when you don't have, uh, when you don't have one of these things, or your camera is too big for one of these things, or you just don't have money for one of these things, a gimbal. Um, what are some camera movements that you can do just handheld to kind of mimic a gimbal look without actually having to use a gimbal? I realized I do this all the time in my videos because I actually rarely use a gimbal. I just don't have time to set it up. I don't have space for it in my bag. I don't have back strength to carry around a gimbal all the time. It's just not very convenient at all when I'm making content every single day. So I've had to kind of improvise and figure out ways to make my camera movements look like gimbal movements when they're actually just handheld. But first, before we get into the actual moves, uh, there's three things that you can do to help better sell this effect of it looking like a gimbal. The first one is using either IBIS or in this case, the EOS R having electronic stabilization. So if you have built-in stabilization on the sensor or if you have electronic stabilization, I highly recommend either of those. Those are gonna help a lot, especially to get rid of that, just that little bit of jitter. It's just gonna smooth things out a little bit and actually quite a, quite a bit uh, depending on which IBIS camera you have. The second thing you can do is use an image stabilized lens. For example, this one has image stabilization built into the lens. Again, same thing, it's gonna help a lot to get rid of some of that jitter and just make it a little bit smoother because our hands are a little bit shaky. And the third thing, if you don't have either of those, I recommend using slow motion. If you didn't realize, when you shoot in slow motion, because everything is slowed down, even the camera movements are slowed down, so it looks a lot smoother and more fluid. For example, if you're filming in like a thousand frames per second, you could just like go like this and it would be like the most perfect smooth movement you'd ever, like you don't even need to really be trying, it's gonna be crazy stable. And that's definitely one of the reasons why I relied on 120 frames per second on the 1DX Mark II a lot in the past was because of that reason, because it didn't have any sort of image stabilization or electronic stabilization. 120 frames per second kept things pretty stable. I guess we could also mention two little quick techniques that help you keep things a little bit more stable when you're doing handheld. The first thing is how you hold the camera. So to me, this is the most stable way of holding a camera. Your kind of elbows are locked in like this and you're, you have one hand on the, on the grip of the camera and the other hand on the bottom. Not like this. I see a lot of people doing this. This is not very stable, like this. 
have it resting down kind of onto your your elbows in your in your little side chest area here and then you're just gonna rest it there. This is gonna be the most stable way to hold a camera. Some people use like a neck strap and do that, that extra point of stabilization, but this is plenty good. Just keep it nice and tight. And the other thing is if you're trying to actually walk or move around, make sure you're doing the ninja step. Um, it's kind of like a, like a heel toe action. So instead of just like stomping around, you're gonna do like a like a heel toe action. Does that does that make sense? Also, because Matt's out of the office, uh, this little guy is going to be my my little model. Thank you so much, Zach and Natalie, for giving me this uh, at the meetup. Which, by the way, the the meetup went great. It was really really fun. I gotta do more of those. It's really nice meeting you guys. There's a lot of really, really cool, nice people uh, subscribing to this channel. So that makes me happy and it makes me happy to actually meet you guys in person. Also, I think they drove from like Jersey, which is like eight or nine hours away to give me this. So I much appreciate that. All right, so let's get into five moves that I like to do handheld to kind of mimic a gimbal move. And the first one is what I call kind of like a tiny orbit. So you're gonna choose a focus point, a subject, something that you're focusing on, and you're just gonna orbit around them really slowly. And key here again is that locked arms, elbows thing, holding it from here. This is like, a, to me, I, I'm sorry if I'm offending somebody, this is to me like a, like a signature of somebody who doesn't really know how to use a camera. When you hold it like this, hold it this way. I, I don't know if it's just me, hold it this way. It's gonna be a lot more stable. And then you're just gonna choose your subject and you're gonna orbit around them. And sometimes I kind of just go back and forth, um, just especially to make sure I have both directions. But you also don't know if, if you're filming somebody, if they do like a head movement or something cool that you weren't anticipating, well, you still have that movement going when that cool thing happens. You got it. This one is probably my favorite one and I do it all the time. You're probably gonna see it in all of my videos now, now that I've told you my secrets. The second gimbal-like move that you can do really easily is kind of like a low to high, almost like a crane movement. So you can you can do this a few different ways, but it's just slowly, smoothly coming from a low angle and then bringing it all the way up. Uh, it's a really, really cool look and I don't think that many people utilize a movement like that. And it's actually a kind of a hard move to do on a gimbal sometimes too. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to use Use your arms, use that, use that muscle of yours. The third thing that you can do to really sell that smooth gimbal effect is to have something in the foreground. So you have your subject a little bit further back and then you have something in the foreground that's close to your camera and then all you have to do is a tiny movement and it makes it look like the camera's really moving because of that foreground element there. If you take away the foreground element, it doesn't look like the camera's moving much at all if you move that slowly, but you put in that foreground element and then you got that really nice movement going on. Fourth move might be my absolute favorite and this is just like a dolly forwards or a dolly backwards. And all I'm doing here is again that locked arm position and then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna plant my feet, I'm gonna move back and then I'm just gonna slowly move forwards. And my feet aren't moving, my feet are staying planted. I'm just moving my body to start farther away and then end up closer. That way you can get a really nice smooth movement. As soon as you have to move your feet, um, that's when things start get pretty obvious that you're not on a gimbal. Use your strengths to your advantage. Use the things that you can do, like plant your feet and just use your body to move forwards real nice and smoothly. You can do that easily by having to walk or run around. That's gonna be a dead giveaway. And then number five, this one I don't do as often, but every once in a while, especially if I'm filming a camera or something like that, 
I just basically do like a top down angle and then I just slowly move the camera down or slowly move it up. And you get just a really nice looking shot. It's super surprising, um, especially if you're doing it slow-mo, it can be really nice, just like a reveal or just dialing in, zooming into something, you're getting really close to it. It's another one of those shots that I don't think that many people really utilize. They think, oh, I'll just do a top down, but then they just keep the camera still um, when they could just add a little bit of movement and make it really interesting, make it a little different. So nice and quick, those are, are my top five camera movements that I do without a gimbal, just with these, these guns, uh, the arms. Um, can you guys guess whose head this is? Apparently this is like a, a mismatch of different, different people. Um, Justin Bieber? Do I look like Justin Bieber? Nah, right? Also, don't just listen to these tips. Try to actually put them to use. Take your camera right now and uh, try all five of those. See how they feel, see how you like them, and that's how you're actually gonna learn. You're not gonna learn by just hearing me say these things. You gotta actually try it for yourself. This weekend, I kinda just realized how many how many people want things or wanna do things, and then they just never do it. They say that it's a, it's a priority, I wanna do this, it's my dream, and then they just never take steps forward. They never take steps towards that thing. So don't be that guy or girl. Take those five tips that I took there. If you wanna be a filmmaker, those are things that would be really, really handy for you to know. I hope this motivational moment will motivate you. So lonely at the office today. Nobody's here. It's all empty. It's just me by my lonesome. Just not as fun being here by yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go home. Hang out with the wife and kid. That'll make me feel less lonely. Uh, I think somebody's not doing their job. <laughs> this is supposed to be like where you drive through. What is going on? Someone's on break. Hey, buddy. How are you? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, you're excited. <laughs> you want one of those? Not in there, buddy. <laughs> See you later. Kai always comes to look at the fishies. He just doesn't know where they, uh, where they end up yet. I just had an interesting thought. Even though I've had a lot of success in, on YouTube and in my career so far, I still cherish and value uh, my wife and uh, my kid here way more than any of that stuff. I think sometimes we think of wealth, uh, that you can be wealthy, but only in terms of money, when really there's a lot of different ways to be wealthy. Money's just one of them. And it's probably one of the least important ways to be wealthy, so. Try to become wealthy in some of the other ways. Like getting a family. It's good times. Show me snake. Oh, is that the snake from the zoo? Yeah.